Hi, welcome to the Frugal Frau. I'm Suki, your host. And today we are going to use the parched corn that we ground up the other day and three different recipes. The first is going to be a sausage recipe using locally grown pork, onions, garlic, salt, thyme, and sage. And I'm going to chop up also peppers and I'm going to chop this all up and form them into patties and they will get cooked in the morning. And then the second recipe, I'm going to use the flour for a cornbread. And that will also sit overnight because I'm going to add some fermenting uh, starter that I already have in another dish for more bread. And uh, so that can ferment and rise overnight. And then the third is we're going to make the hot beverage from the over parched corn or so I should say the blackened parched corn and it makes a corn like coffee drink or a coffee drink made from, from parched corn. So it's not really coffee, but I just call it coffee corn or corn coffee. However you want to state that. Anyway, so what I need to do is I simply need to chop up the onions, peppers and garlic fairly finely. Add them to my ground pork and then add an egg, maybe two eggs, and add my flour and the herbs. Mix it all up and form them into patties. So let's get started. So I have a nice Stuttgart onion for my root cellar. And I'm simply going to chop this up. And I will get back to you when I finish chopping up all of the uh, vegetables. So I'll see you after that. All right, I have my onion, garlic, and pepper chopped up. And you can see it was uh, a decent sized onion, not a whole pepper because it was a rather large pepper. But all in all, I have probably about a cup and a half of chopped vegetables. Now you could probably add other vegetables to this. You could probably add grated carrot. You could probably add grated other root vegetables such as turnips. But this is what I'm doing today. And sometimes I vary it, but this is what I'm going to do today. And I'm going to give this a quick kind of stir with my fork before I get my hands in there. And I want to make sure I evenly distribute all those vegetables in the meat. And I will be gluing this all together with eggs and the flour. And of course, I will be adding salt, thyme, and sage. And this was one pound of ground pork, and uh, which is adequate. And I will be cooking these all at once. And then of course, there'll be leftovers for another breakfast for another day. So that's always a benefit. Sometimes I only cook half of the pork because I might use the other half for something else in another recipe later that day. I put in two tablespoons of thyme. And this time I didn't grind my thyme up. Uh, it will soften quite well while it's cooking and while it's in with the rather liquidy kind of fatty liquid of the pork one and two tablespoons they're kind of very heaping tablespoons of thyme I'm kind of separating that a little bit and of course maybe a little bit more because I really like thyme there three tablespoons of, of not too compressed thyme because it's rather light and fluffy I'm gonna get my fork out of there and now salt and I will only add one teaspoon of salt all right, that is enough salt. And put this over here. And now I want to start adding my flour. Now, I probably don't need a whole lot of flour. I'm going to start off with just a quarter cup of that wonderful parched ground corn flour. And I'll add one egg to begin with. There, I thank my chickens. 
Maybe that was one of Henrietta's. I don't know which one it is. They're all uh, buff Orpingtons. I can't really tell them apart. But they're very good girls and they're young chickens. They're not even a year old yet. They will be a year old this May. And so this is nice and simple because you can buy breakfast sausage, but it costs more than just the ground pork. And this way I have complete control over the seasoning and I can save a little money on it too. And this comes from a local farm. It's all grass and pasture fed, grass finished, no antibiotics, no hormones. No vaccines so I know it's wholesome and totally healthy now that's looking pretty good but I think I do want to add the second egg because I really want these to stick together well so let's just crack Gladys's egg thank you Gladys And I'll add another quarter cup of my flour. I want to clean that up too. There's a little notch there, so I've spilled it over the edge. No worries. And we'll just mix this up. And then I'm simply going to form these into little round flat patties. Put them on a baking sheet. And uh, I will fry these in the frying pan over the wood stove in the morning. But these will all be ready for me to do that tomorrow morning. And I'll simply just stuff these in the refrigerator for now. And then I'll have an entire breakfast made in the morning with hardly any effort. All right, so now simply I am just going to get rid of that spoon, put it here, and I'm just going to grab little bits at a time and probably just slightly less than a golf ball, I think, size. I don't know because I've never played golf. I don't think that's something that I would ever do, but some people like it. And these will get nice and firm overnight in the refrigerator. And then it'll be very easy to cook these in the morning. Okay, I have formed all my sausage patties and put them on this tray. And it looks like I have, let's see, this is a dozen, 26. So just over two dozen out of one pound, so. Okay, I have here, uh, I just a couple little things. This is a sourdough starter for another bread recipe that I'm using, but I like to use it and make my cornbread at the same time. So I will be mixing this up for another video for my gluten-free sourdough bread. Anyways, but I wanted to put a bit of this, about a quarter cup of this in my egg mixture for my cornbread. So I'm setting this aside for right now, and uh, I want to get my eggs cracked. I have a half a cup of butter, three eggs. Yes, it's, a lot of people would probably only put one or two eggs in this, but I always put three eggs in because I want the extra protein in my bread, and I just want a higher protein bread. And it just gives it a nicer texture since I'm using some pretty coarse flour, which is my parched corn flour here. And I have oat flour if I need it, and corn masa, which I did buy from uh, Azure Standard because I'm currently not making my own masa. And so what I'm going to do, I'm going to mix my dry ingredients first. And so I'm just going to use the standard one teaspoon of a baking powder. one teaspoon of salt. 
And again, I never use iodized salt because I am also putting sourdough in here and the iodine would kill the culture in my sourdough. Or would at least thwart it from reproducing as fast as I would like to. And then I'm going to mix, this is a quarter cup measure. I'm going to mix just about a half a cup of the parched corn flour into the salt and baking powder just so I make sure that I eventually get this all evenly distributed amongst all the dry ingredients. So since I'm going to use the same whisk for the wet ingredients, I'm going to do the dry ingredients first. Just makes more sense that way. Okay, looks like my salt and baking powder are very well incorporated. Now I'm going to use my half cup measure. And I typically don't use a whole cup measure. I like my half cup measure because it fits nicely in the tops of my one gallon jars without me uh, messing it up and getting it all over the place. So I already have a I already have a half a cup in here. I'm going to add another half and another half. And that is uh, one and a half. And now that's two cups of my parched corn flour. And once again, I'm gonna give that a quick stir with the whisk, just to make sure I'm keeping the baking powder and the salt evenly distributed. So I will be adding all together probably three and a half to four cups of flour to this. Now I know this is a, a quite uh, coarse flour compared to the oat flour or the corn masa. And so in order to help this stick together, I'm going to add some of the corn masa. So let me add probably about a one cup of corn masa. What I'm going to try to do is try to make this without any oat flour. And, uh, but you could do that if you wanted it because I really want the corny flavor. Oh yeah, that was supposed to be funny. But, but I'm trying to make sure that the predominant flavor is of the parched corn flour because really it has a much more complex and interesting flavor than the corn masa. So I have probably about three cups of flour in here now and I'm just going to set that aside for a moment and get my wet ingredients mixed together here. So I need to crack my eggs. Let's see, we've got marigold, petunia, and cosmos. No, I gave them all flower names. Anyways, that was just for fun. I really don't know who is who. I'm just happy to have happy hens that give me eggs almost every day. All right. I'm going to whisk those eggs quickly together. Get the shell off my fingers so I don't get it in there. And then I have a half a cup of melted butter, which I'm adding also to that. Then I will add my egg mixture to, actually, before I do that, one other step I want to do here. All right. I'm going to add a quarter cup of my gluten-free sourdough mixture, and you can see it's quite bubbly. And this has been going now for four days. And that's just so that 
overnight. This is uh, cornmeal and corn masa flour bread will um, just have develop its own little bit of sourdough because it's just an overnight ferment. And you know what? I like that so much that I'm going to add another quarter cup. Why not? And then if need be, I'll add a little water to keep my mixture liquidy enough. And I'll get my whisk back out here and whisk that sourdough starter into my eggs. And that way I know my liquids are thoroughly incorporated into this. And put this aside because I will be using that again for my other standard gluten-free bread which I'll make at the same time because I will have that wood stove going tomorrow and I don't want to waste the heat and I will eat up the uh, corn parched corn flour bread first and put the other two loaves uh, out in the cold box. I could put them in the freezer but the cold box is still remaining very cold and our temperatures are predicted to plummet again, so they'll probably freeze out there anyways. There, and I want to make a little dip in here to pour my egg mixture in. And I'm also going to get a little water in case I need it. All right, I put about a cup of water there. Whether I use it all or not, I don't know. I'll see. Since there's always variability in the egg size, I can't tell you the exact amount. But I will show you the texture that we're going for. I'll put that in there because I don't want to waste any egg mixture and then I don't want to waste any of that, so I'm going to scrape that out too. Why? Because I'm cheap. I'm just trying to be frugal and I just want to get all the goodness out of there. Alrighty that in the sink and let's mix this up and let's see if I need any more liquid and then you'll notice I didn't add any sweetener or sugar to this and you could do that if you wanted to you could also make make it savory by adding chopped peppers or chopped hot peppers to this and I've done that and I've also added cheese to it but I'm just going to make a fairly plain one. It looks like I'm going to have to add some water. So I'm going to add about half of that water. And then I want to add dried cranberries. Just because I have them and I like them. And uh, I'll order these. I didn't grow these. But I ordered these from Azure Standard. And I get them 30 pounds at a time, and then I keep them fresh in these Gamma Seal lid buckets. I'll close that better later. And so I put, oh, probably about three quarters of a cup of those in there. And while this is still a little bit liquidy, and I'm going to add more liquid because it's pretty dense at this point. And that will give just little hints of sweetness as one cuts into this in the morning, slathers butter over it while it's still warm. And this will be eaten tomorrow along with the sausages that I made. So I can tell you it has just a wonderful smell because of the parched corn and you can see it's too dry so I'm dumping all the rest of the water in so that's a total cup of water three eggs three cups of flour total and half a cup of the starter And will this be light and fluffy and cake-like? No. 
this will be rather dense but what's nice is that is when I cut it you know after the first day I cut it and then I cut it laterally and then I can toast the two lateral sides that are cut in a frying pan and that's really quite nice and by laterally I mean if I take the wedge and I cut it like this so parallel to the upper and lower surfaces of the bread to be exact this is still a little bit dry and it's as the flour because uh, it takes a while for the parched corn flour since it's a denser flour to absorb the liquid I know that overnight it's going to absorb a lot more so I want to add more water to this now you could add buttermilk to this or you could add raw milk whatever you like or even yogurt I'm just adding water because I did add my own sourdough starter so I don't want the yogurt or buttermilk to interfere with that culture so this is looking real nice now and what I'm going to do is grease a cast iron pan I believe it's a 10 inch and then let this sit overnight on top of my wood stove which is slightly warm at this point and this will just make a wonderful hearty bread for the morning there now I need to grease my pan wipe my hands off of course okay now okay my assistant has a tape measure so I can tell you exactly how big this pan is yes it is considered to be the 10 inch pan the inside diameter is pretty much exactly 10 inches so it is a 10 inch pan thank you <laughs> now I need to grease my pan I did not bring a second spatula down so I'm gonna to have to use this one and I'll just wipe it off really well in the sink preserving as much of the goodness there as I can because I don't want to waste it so let's just clean this off real quick And what I have here is lard, which of course I've rendered myself. And this happens to be lard from pork bellies or bacon fat. So it smells good. And of course it has a slightly bacony flavor to it. So when this bread cooks, that little crusty parts on the bottom and the sides will have that slight little flavor of bacon now that should make everybody smile there I will grease it and uh, that's good put that in there and then I just want to spread my bread out and it's still you know it's still a little dry so let's go ahead and add a little bit more water so now I'm getting on to probably one and three quarters cup of water because that parched corn flour is absorbing this slowly and because every grind is different this is just something if you're grinding your own you have to experiment with because every grain is different every variety of corn is different how much how dry you got that corn when you dried it on the cob 
how coarse or fine you have ground the flour. If you grind it very fine, it's going to absorb the water a lot quicker. So I'm going to err on the side of a little bit moist from what I would do if I was just, say, doing this with oats or corn or corn masa. And that's because I know it's going to continue to absorb the moisture. Oh, it smells so good. And a tiny bit more. Yeah. Just get it all mixed in. to put it in my pan. Ooh, someone didn't mix this well enough. That's okay, I'll get it mixed in the pan here. All right, just smash that around. Get the surface of that wet where it was a little bit dry. Scrape that in with my finger scraper. Now what else I'm going to do is I'm going to dip my spatula in there and get the top a little moist. And that's just so I can spread it around a little more evenly. Make sure I don't have big air pockets under there. And then, just to be artistic, I'm going to take my spatula and make a little kind of ray design around the entire perimeter of this. Not that you have to do this, but I just thought it would be fun. Now it'll, what if I just do a little crosshash? It's kind of like a flower there. I wish you could smell this, but <laughs> you'll just have to do this yourself. And then you can have the pleasure of smelling that wonderful parched corn flower smell. Good morning. Okay, it's time for me to bake my co parched corn meal flour and bread. I should just say the bread. I have it here. It was sitting out overnight. And uh, I'm just going to check my fire. Oh, yeah. I have plenty of fuel in there. It looks good. And I'm simply going to put it in the oven. At this point, the oven actually is not quite up to temperature, but... It's going to get up to temperature because I'm going to be cooking on the top and I'm going to keep this, the air flow open so I can get my sausages cooked. And uh, I had pulled these out after I made them last night. And so I'm just going to place them in my frying pan and they won't take very long to cook at all. And then I can keep them warm above the stove on this platter on the warming shelf. It's a cold morning and I'm glad to have my stove running. I've already poured my tea for myself and coffee for my husband and mmm. That first cup of tea seems to be the best one every morning. That 
there. And I simply have to cook these. All right, I'm on the last little batch of sausage here. And they're just about ready to come out of the frying pan. My bread is still cooking in the oven, but I'm going to check it in a moment. And uh, take these out. Put them on my tray. I've taken my bread out of the oven and uh, it looks beautiful and I'm very happy that I added the extra moisture to this when I was mixing it up because I suspected and I was correct that the parched corn flour which is a bit coarser than corn moss or the oat flour that I also put in would absorb a lot more of the moisture and it did. But I still have a fairly moist loaf, which is nice. So let's just pull out one piece, if I can get this out without breaking it. Maybe I have to get two. Oopsies. And uh, give a, a nice look-see on that. Another plate here. Let's see if I can get this out without breaking it. I always hate getting the first one out because it's a little hard. Oh yeah, that is like super lovely. My sausage and bread are done. Bon appetit.